Hello, and welcome to my tutorial on how to take extracted video files and convert them into an XFID video. This portion of my series will go over how to utilize a program called StackRip, specifically version .3. However, the basic principles of this video can be applied to all versions of the program. This video assumes you already have the extracted video files located on your hard drive. If you don't know how to do this, please watch my other video on using DVD Shrink to extract the contents of a DVD to your hard drive. To begin, we'll need to download the latest version of StackRip from one of the links to the right of this video. Once you've downloaded, simply extract the files to the location of your choice. Right click on the files, go to Extract All. This will start a wizard, simply click Next. We tell it where we would like to stick it. In our case, we want to stick it in Program Files slash StackRip. Click Next. We're going to be extracting the files now. And click Finish once complete. Now we are given a display of the files that we have just extracted. As with all programs that you extract, the very first thing you'll want to do is actually read the README, or in this case, the readfirst.txt. Whenever we actually open it, we see that StackRip requires .NET 3.5 to run. Now for this, you can download it from the link that's already provided here, or you can download it from one of the links to the right of this video. You cannot proceed with the installation until .NET 3.5 has been installed. Now we will want to double click on the stackrip.exe executable. It's going to ask us where we want to have our settings stored. Uh, just go ahead and click on the user default. and then stack rips will start for the first time for you. Since this is the first time we've used stack rip on this computer, we're going to have to make some adjustments. First, we're going to have to change our container type from an MKV to an AVI. Then we're going to want to change our video codec from X264 to XVID exact file size. And next we're going to want to change our audio type from AAC to variable bitrate MP3. For ours, we're going to be using 110 to 150 kilobits per second. Next, we're going to want to change our options. Let's go to View, Options. From here, we're going to have our default target directory. I prefer it to be the parent directory of the source file directory. Target file name. I like to have it the name of the source file directory because of how I extract my uh, video files. And temp, I like to do the source file directory and as you can see it will now append it with temp files as a directory name. This works very well and keeps all of the new files that StackRip is going to create into this temporary file container. Next we're going to want to go to preparation make sure that everything is selected here. Go to automation see if you want to change anything here uh, auto rip subtitles is something that I leave on. If you do not want to have your subtitles, feel free to go ahead and remove it. And then go to Advanced. Under Advanced, we're going to want to go to the Assistant section. And we're going to want to turn off all the reminders. If you don't, you're going to have to click Next right over here once we get to it several times. It can be quite annoying. Go ahead and click OK. Now that we have our basic container created of what we're going to want to use every single time, we go ahead and save it as our default template. Now we're going to want to load the source files that we're going to be converting into XFID. So we click on Source, which of course pops up our dialog box that gives us information. Go ahead and close that down. For this one, we're going to do a single or merge, and we locate the files. I have stuck them into the DVD directory and as you can see on this particular video I'm going to be doing the first section of the Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring so we simply double click on it hit control A to highlight all the files and click open now you can see that they've all been added to the list and go ahead and click OK we're going to be prompted for a dialog box saying there's an external applications that need to be installed Go ahead and close down this, and as you can see, we have something that says File Not Found. Let's go ahead and click Setup, which will actually start the process. 
All right, we can see before unchecking something, please read here. Now we don't want to read here because on this we need to go ahead and get all of this stuff installed because it already looked at our basic profile that we've configured over here and it's saying, hey, we need to install these. Now it's only going to do this on the first time you install StackRip. Go ahead and click Execute Setup Now and it's going to start the installers for you. On the installers, simply accept the defaults for all of the installation. And as you can see, it's not like the old stack rip where you actually have to say, please start this one. It'll actually go to each section and start it for you. Once again, accept the defaults. As you can see on most everything, I actually stick mine into a subdirectory called stuff, and this is going to be for your start menu. You do not have to do this. This is only something that I do to try to keep my program group to actually look pretty decent. And now we get a dialog box saying stack rip setup succeeded. So we go ahead and click OK. Close down this dialog box and you will see now we have an OK by the AVI synth. So go ahead and click close and we let StackRip perform its functions. If you've configured StackRip to actually extract your subtitles, they will extract at this time also. Now that our subtitles have been extracted, we are brought back to the main StackRip interface. Here we have two main things that we want to look at. We want to look at file size and we want to look at video bitrate. Video bitrate versus file size is always a trade-off and it is one of the most hotly debated topics out there whenever it comes to converting video to an XFIT. What I have found typically works best for a non-interlaced video is to try to keep the video bitrate around 900 kilobits per second. However, this increases the file size. As we can see here, it has increased this one by 89 megabytes. For this particular video, I am going to go ahead and keep the file size at 700 megabytes. Even though this reduces my video bitrate, I know that overall the video quality will be sufficient for the media that I am actually viewing. The primary time when you want to keep your video bitrate above 900 kilobits per second is whenever you have an interlaced video. An interlaced video at a lower bitrate will end up having many artifacts and will end up looking very grainy and pixelated. You'll want to keep the video bitrate somewhere between 1200 and 1500 kilobits per second to try to avoid any type of artifacts within the interlaced resulting video.